Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using Clapeyron's theorem of three moments. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span AB and span BC. Also, there is an overhanging span CD. In the span AB, there is a point load 72 kN acting in the center. In the span BC, there is a uniformly distributed load 24 kN per meter acting for the full span. In the overhanging span CD, there is a point load 15 kN acting in the point D. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the point B and in the point C, there are hinged supports. Span AB is 4 meter long. Span BC is 5 meter long. The overhanging span CD is 2 meter long. In this analysis, we can easily calculate MC because on the right of C, there is overhanging. To calculate MC, we have to find moment in the point C from the point D. In the point D, there is a point load 15 kN. The overhanging distance is 2 meter. So, when we multiply the load 15 kN with the distance 2 meter, we will get the moment MC which is equal to minus 30 kN meter. Here we have to be very careful. Here when we apply the load from the overhanging span, we have to always apply with the negative sign. Because of that we are getting a negative moment. We have calculated MC in the point C. So there is no need to consider the overhanging span anymore. In this beam, now we have to find two moments, they are MA and MB. Using two spans, we can make one equation. Using the spans AB and BC, we can make one equation, but we need two. In this case, we have to make an imaginary span on the left of A. You can see that I have made an imaginary span. A naught A on the left of A. The length of the imaginary span is L naught. Now using the spans A naught A and A B, we can make one equation. And using the spans A B and B C, we can make another equation. So now we can make two equations. First, let us take the spans A naught A and AB and make the first equation. First, let us calculate the ordinate in the span AB. In the span AB, there is a point load 72 kN acting on the center. The formula to calculate the ordinate is WL upon 4. Using the formula, we are getting 72. Using the value, we can make this diagram. Now let us apply the theorem of three movements in spans A naught A and A B. In this equation, we have to calculate area 1 and x bar right. Let us calculate area 1. It is a triangle. We know the formula for the area of a triangle. Half into breadth into height. Using the formula, we will get 144. Now let us calculate x bar right. This is a symmetrical diagram. So the centroid lies in the center. The centroid distance towards the right is 4 upon 2. We will get 2 meter. In this equation, let us apply the values. L0 is equal to 0. L1 is equal to 4. Area 1 and x bar right just before we have calculated. Let us apply all of the values. This term 
and this term will be zero because these are for the imaginary span after the calculations we are making the first equation now let us take the spans a b and b c and make the second equation first let us calculate the ordinate for b c in the span b c there is udl 24 kN per meter acting for the full span the formula to calculate the ordinate is wl square upon 8 using the formula we are getting 75 using the value we can draw this diagram now let us apply the theorem of three moments in spans a b and b c in this equation we have to find area 1 x bar left area 2 and x bar right area 1 we have already calculated 144 this is a symmetrical diagram so the centroid lies in the center the length 4 meter upon 2 we will get x bar left now let us calculate area 2 for this parabola the formula for area is 2 upon 3 into breadth into height using the formula we can calculate area 2 this is also a symmetrical diagram so the centroid lies in the center the centroid distance towards the right is 5 upon 2 we will get 2.5 in this equation let us apply the values L1 is equal to 4, L2 is equal to 5. We have already calculated area 1, x bar left, area 2 and x bar right. Let us apply all of the values. Also, we have calculated MC which is equal to minus 30. Let us apply that also. After the calculations, we have made the second equation alternatively we can use the formulas and make the equations first using the formula let us make the first equation in the span a b there is a point load 72 kN. here we have to find 6a x bar right upon l the formula is w b upon l into l square minus b square here w is 72 b is 2 l is 4 when we apply the values inside the formula we are getting 432 in the equation let us apply this value after applying we get the first equation now using the formulas let us make the second equation in the span a b we have to calculate 6a x bar left upon l the formula is w a upon l into l square minus a square here w is 72 a is 2 length is 4 when we apply the values inside the formula we are getting 432 in the span bc we have to calculate 6a x bar right upon l the formula is wl cube upon 4 here w is 24 l is 5 when we apply the values inside the formula we are getting 750 let us apply these values in the equation finally we are making the second equation we have made two equations now we can solve these two equations using the calculator after solving we are getting the final moments ma is equal to minus 28.5 kN meter and mb is equal to minus 51 kN meter in this analysis we have calculated all of the moments now we are going to calculate the reactions First, let us take the span AB and calculate the reactions. 
in the span AB, there are two movements. MA, which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. MB, which is acting in the clockwise direction. By taking moment about to B, we can calculate RA by applying the rule sigma V is equal to 0, we can calculate RB1. Now let us take the spans BC and the overhanging span CD together and calculate the reactions. Here we have to consider only one moment. MB which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. No need to consider MC because it will get eliminated when we take moment. By taking moment about C, I am calculating RB2. Then applying the rule sigma V is equal to 0, I am calculating RC. Now let us add RB1 and RB2 so that we will get RB. Now we are going to make the shear force diagram. Before drawing the diagram, let us calculate the shear force values. I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using the values, we can draw the shear force diagram. Now let us make the free movement diagram then end movement diagram. After that let us combine both of the diagrams so that we will get the bending movement diagram. Now we are going to end the session. Thank you for watching this video.